All right, guys, and welcome to a long plane review of Fire and Forget 2 on the Amstrad GX4000 console. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot more uh, GX4000 long plays and reviews this year. And we're going to start off with one of the uh, first ever games released for the GX4000 console from a uh, Titus Software in 1990. Well, apparently, it's a conversion of uh, an arcade coin up they released. Although no one's ever seen to uh, ever seen it in the arcades, and there's certainly no main ROM available, so very rare. Uh, okay, before we continue, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick screenshot here to show you the skyline, how it's supposed to look. But when I recorded the video, it hasn't got quite the uh, smooth transition between the uh, blues. But I just wanted to point that out very quickly before we start. So here we go, booting it up. A nice loading screen there, and uh, basically, what's the uh, story of the game? Let's have the read of the uh, instructions. With a uh, fine forget to prepare to experience the most extra extraordinary arcade game ever designed for a console. You will have to pilot the Thundermaster 2, capable of 850 horsepower on the road, and able to convert yourself to a genuine airborne attacker, both equipped with ionic phases and missile launcher. Uh, well, the story of the game. The third International Peace Conference is to be held this year in Mega Megapolis. However, authorities have been warned that a dangerous group of terrorists is driving toward the city in order to destroy it and kill the eminent scholars and industrialists who, who have come for the occasion. The government solution is to call on you once again, driving the Thundermaster 2. There is very little time remaining as the terrorist convoy is rapidly approaching its target. So there you go guys, and basically there's about five stages, uh, and basically to race the end of the stage and catch up with one of the uh, trucks or tankers and blow it up. And so we race along the road, uh, and we can also take to the skies as well. We've got a simple firing gun at the front there, it sort of, sort of fires off salvos of four bullets at a time destroying targets as we go and there's like tons and tons of enemies in the game and lots of different sprites and it sort of plays like a uh, hmm, cross between road blasters a little bit of afterburner thrown in there and possibly possibly inspired by say like Mad Max 2 or similar as, as in the movie, of course. Um, and it seems like a nice, fun little action game, um, and possibly not a bad start to the uh, GX4000's life. But it is rather basic and simple. Certainly, things move nice and smoothly, and it looks decent enough, but. Uh, the GX4000 was capable of much better graphics. In fact, this is pretty much identical to the um, the Amstrad CPC version uh, released a little bit later on. Just say for the um, the blue sky background there, which is in a lot more colours. Right, I didn't realise it. I'm taking to the skies. I think I can pick up that thing there. I'm trying to avoid it. I think that gives us invulnerability. Uh, I didn't realise uh, when I started playing this game that that was a pickup. And there's only a couple of them in the, all of the five stages, so I've just missed the first one. But I will pick up one later. And yeah, there's actually a really good variety of enemies and pickups and things like that. As we'll see as we progress throughout the game. So as you can see, I'm steering left and right, and there are bends in the road, but there's no, um, uh, what's, how, how can I describe it, gravitational pull, g-force, no, uh, what I mean is you can't, you don't need to steer around the bends, you can, you can just basically go around bends without moving left or right on the joystick, and it'll take you around, so you're never going to sort of come off the road. Which really simplifies the game a lot. Um, 
Oh, we've reached the first convoy here. And there's nothing defending it, so we just blast away with our missiles. And that's stage one completed. Leader shot down. Yeah, and you've got missiles there which you can activate by pressing uh, both fire buttons simultaneously. Fire button one shoots your guns, and fire button two sh uh, takes you to the skies. And there's a head terrorist uh, we're trying to kill. You got me, but I ain't dead. A uh, nice little screen and intermission there. That's as long as it lasts. And on to level 2, and things don't really change that much. The uh, city in the horizon is slightly different. We've got some sort of mountains there now. We've got a very, very basic road and uh, just orange for the size of the road. Obviously, we're in some kind of desert or something. Perhaps a little bit more detail could have been given. Now, uh, those are air mines which will catch you out if you're flying in the air. And things seem sort of simple enough to start off with, but uh, this is one tough game. Oh, there are missile pickups there. Certainly from uh, mission free onwards, really, things get really tough. Actually, this is this level is quite tough as well. Um, what starts off with just like running down the road as fast as you can, blasting away without a care in the world, suddenly becomes a complicated task of balancing your fuel, your kerosene. The kerosene is the red level there, that and that on the uh, status bar for your flying. And, miss, and uh, your number of missiles and you've got to sort of balance out how you use your fuel, how you use your kerosene and how you use your missiles to get through the level and I'll perhaps illustrate this a little bit better from the uh, next mission onwards because your fuel runs down really really quickly and fuel pickups become really really sparse later in the game So really the trick to this is, uh, often if you get sort of a group of these enemies, you need to really get rid of them as quickly as possible. The quicker you get rid of enemies um, in a certain attack pattern, the quicker your fuel pickup or A pickup will appear. Which is why it's a sort of a subtle balance between, um, well do you, do you use your, oh that's that um, invulnerability pickup. Yes, we've got it now. So as your fuel gets low, you might want to take the skies and use a bit of kerosene, or you might want to use your rockets to blast away all the enemies that are on the screen quickly. So you perhaps might get a fuel pickup coming. So, but um, you need to sort of remember where, at what stage in the level, fuel pickups will appear or kerosene pickups will, will appear. For example, you might have got a full tank of kerosene but very, very low on petrol. And you'll find out later on if you blast away a group of enemies and you've not taken to the skies that you've run out of fuel but you've got plenty of kerosene and then the next pickup is a load of kerosene cans. So you're like, damn it, I could have used, I could have just flown in the air and can save my, or conserve my fuel. Luckily we got a fuel pickup there. Oh! It's been hit by a mine in the road. I'm not going to do this without losing a life, but on I think probably Mission 3 or Mission 4, certainly Mission 5, I've just basically ended up running out of fuel, I've got no chance but to just uh, die and lose a life. But there are life pickups you can get, and I think you get bonus lives for uh, getting 100,000 points. There was a bonus life, I just missed it. And maybe you saw that sort of little helmet there that was flying towards me. Certainly when you see these enemies, you need to get rid of them really quickly. Because they'll basically just stay on the screen for ages and ages and ages. Which might mean you miss out on a pickup coming up. Why 
one issue um, of the game is you're firing your main guns. One, it's really, really hard to sort of target um, these vehicles and enemies. Certainly, if the roads are sort of bending left and right. Ooh. Trying to trying to target enemies becomes really difficult. And uh, secondly, you can only seem to fire off maybe like four bullets at a time, and then there's like a gap and a pause. So your firing is not constant. So if you're travelling at 240 uh, miles per hour, like I am, then uh, if you suddenly need to get rid of something in the road blocking your way, like a, like a mine or a stationary turret or whatever that's, that's coming right up in front of you and you need to fire away, there might be a slight delay and then you uh, end up smashing into it and losing a life. And that can be really annoying. But that's probably the most annoying part of this game. Um, it's hard to describe it but actually playing it yourself. So, for example, on these enemies, you need to really time when you shoot. Oh, just out of fuel, but I managed to take the skies there just in time. It's getting really hard to time my shots at the right point for when he's in the air, when I'm level with him. Should have just used a rocket there, a missile, because I've got plenty stored up. We're coming on to the leader shortly. And hopefully we can get rid of him quickly. He drops uh, like little mines out the back of his uh, truck there. But we're in the air so we can avoid him. We've got plenty of missiles. But bear in mind your missile count doesn't carry over to the next stage, unfortunately, I believe. So that's stage two completed. Uh, three more stages to go. But yeah, the targeting is uh, really annoying. What what would have been a good idea is to have like some kind of like crosshairs permanently on the screen, showing you where you where you could shoot when you're moving about the screen. It's certainly a lot more difficult in the air to shoot uh, flying objects. You need to be in some really bizarre sort of angles to uh, shoot some uh, some aircraft. Well, anyway, on to stage four. So that's one big gripe, sort of shooting and targeting our, um, objects. My next big gripe would be uh, collision detection in the game. Some of the collision detection is absolutely appalling. You think there's like basically a uh, yard and yards gap between uh, you and an object and suddenly you blow up, which is why I'm being extra careful of these objects here and taking a wide berth around them. Well I guess they have to make the collision detection generous because when you're firing your guns you'd never end up hitting anybody at all. It'd been a very frustrating experience. <clears throat> Yeah, I had the same problem with uh, another sort of 3D shoot 'em up. God, what was its name? It's a French game. It's like a 3D. Hmm. Oh, you'll come to me in a minute. Oh, 3D fight. <clears throat> Really, really excellent um, game, just like this one, which is, this is actually a kind of a rip-off of. That was from Lorry Seals in 1985. Well worth checking out. 3D Fight, a really, really excellent game. Um, but the same, really bad targeting problem with the guns. Way more so than uh, Fire and Forget to. Actually, just quickly, I like to talk about who's programmed the game, who's made the music, who's done the graphics. Um, Titus, as usual, don't normally list who's done the game. Let's have a quick scroll through the manual. 
No, Titus, uh, Titus never seemed to list who the programmers were. Never seemed to allow them any credit. Which is a bit of a shame, because uh, a lot of the Titus games are really good. As I already mentioned, I have to give credit, there's a huge number of enemies and different <coughs> um, sprites and things in the game. The manual lists absolutely tons of them. And it's well worth reading the manual to sort of learn how uh, different enemies attack you or their patterns or whatever. Oh, I should have just got rid of this guy here with a missile. Oh, actually, is he invulnerable to missiles? I can't remember. No, he's not. Well, I wasted a lot of fuel there getting rid of him. This is a reasonable fun to play, but it's ultimately a frustrating experience, especially for a game so simple. It is an improvement on the original Fire and Get 1. Of course, that was never released on the uh, GX4000 console. I mean, this was pretty much the first game ever released for the uh, console, apart from the uh, packing title, Burning Rubber. And this was like the first game reviewed for the console by uh, Amstrad Action Magazine, and they gave this game an absolutely whopping 94%, which is absolutely ridiculous. I think they later re-reviewed the game and gave it something like 55%, I think. But uh, yeah, that 94% for this, that's... I think they were trying to sort of... Uh, make a big fuss of the of the new console and get everyone on board and buying the console and buying the games and uh, well I think they let integrity get out, go out the window there and just uh, gave the first ever game a stupidly high mark when really doesn't deserve it this is no no real better than any um, normal Amstrad CPC release all they've done is got a few nice pictures with extra colours got the nice skyline, which remember guys, has not really come out in the uh, recording on the, from the emulator. Perhaps I should have used a different codec, but maybe. I don't know what happened there. Remember the screenshot at the start of the video I showed you. But that's it really. Uh, nothing really to warrant the £25 price tag you would have paid at the time to buy this on cart. Apart from the privilege of uh, having no loading. Oh yeah, that thing there just blew up the sky there. You probably didn't see the sprite very clearly because it's still in the distance, but that's a little thing that basically uh, hovers around and basically jumps onto your uh, Thunder Master craft there and sucks all the uh, petrol out for a large chunk of it. So you need to get rid of them really quickly. Okay, the leader's been spotted. If you notice, guys, there's a countdown, a distance countdown. A bit like Chase HQ, actually. This is one of the, probably the hardest boss out of the whole game. My trick here is to keep your distance, stay about 180 miles an hour, reduce your speed from there, and keep, it, keep your distance because those bikers, uh, they fire lots of bullets at you, and if you're up close, you've got no chance of avoiding them. Hopefully you might have had a few rockets saved up, there wasn't any rocket pickups in this stage. So we're going to have to blast away for a very long time against this uh, guy. Ah, damn it. So even I got caught there. It would be nice to try and do this game without losing a life, but I really don't think it's possible. But you do get a generous number of lives, you get five lives. And I believe three continues. If you lose all your lives and lose it continue, then you start back at the start of the stage you, you uh, died on. Okay, yeah, just very subtly moving left and right there. You can sort of anticipate when those bikers are uh, circling the truck there will uh, shoot you. I think they're flying bikers actually, not on the road. Yeah, they are flying because if you take the skies, they move up with you as you move up as well. But they're real awkward swines. I 
and uh, yeah, you can't destroy them. The, the, the truck will blow up first before these uh, sky bikers, whatever you want to call them. Now, as for other versions of the game, um, well, um, I believe it was released on quite a few systems, uh, Amiga and Atari ST, uh, they had pretty decent versions of it. The PC DOS version was okay, but it had appalling music, because it had the uh, PC was saddled with the uh, PC buzzer at the time, no sound cards. Um, there's also versions of the Sega Master System, which was uh, okay. I think I think that was quite popular at the time, actually. Um, there was a Spectrum version planned, but never released. Uh, but there was a Commodore 64 version released, um, but apparently it's appalling uh, and really, really bad. Um, so. <laughs> The Amstrad certainly got the best 8-bit home computer version, where it's better than the Master System version is up for debate. Uh, from looking at the video for the Master System version, it's, the Master System version is probably better. It's a bit of a shame. Yeah, stage 4, and we've got a change of, uh, well, scenery around us. We've got, now got green by the side of the road, so uh, I've seen some grassy area. Yeah, and uh, well, stage 4 and stage 5 end up being quite long. After three stages, we're about 20 minutes to the game, but we've still got another 22 uh, odd minutes of footage left. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, remember at the, uh, at the top of the screen there, in the middle of the status bar, we've got a countdown of a uh, number of miles to uh, visual contact with the uh, convoy leader. Oh, sorry, it just disappeared there. It was landing. Yeah, so we've got a 20,000 there, full visual contact. So yeah, number of lives you got left in the top left corner, represented by those little heads and helmets. Three lives left. High score and current score. Fuel level in green there, going down very rapidly of course. Uh, the red bar is K above it, that's kerosene, that's for your flying ability. That was close. And uh, obviously they got your speed, a uh, bonus pops up as you uh, pick up more things on the road, and that gets uh, counted down at the end of the uh, stage. And the far right number of missiles you've got. See four missiles there, doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean you've got four missiles in total. I think you pretty much get four missiles per missile pickup or an icon. So there's roughly about 16 missiles I've got there. hogs here, they take quite a lot of bullets to blow up. You might as well avoid them, they don't generally shoot at you. If you destroy all uh, in one wave, you get a bonus. Probably a good idea to try and get as much points as possible anyway, because then you'll get more bonus lives. So I believe you do get an extra life at uh, the 100,000 mark. You see I'm doing quite well here, um, but I did say this is a really, really tough game. Uh, I pretty much recorded this in stages at a time and used a couple of reloads here and there just for the sake of continuity. Um, I didn't want to, and certainly on the last stage, I didn't want to lose my last life and having to use the continue and start all over the game um, because, you know, the, the video would be even longer. Um, but it took a, a lot of practice actually. I think when I first bought this game, 
Ooh, out of fuel there. You lose your life. Oh, 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 oh! Just <laughs> jammy get. Just snuck a fuel canister there. Excellent. And there you go. But um, yeah, very tough game. Very unforgiving sometimes. I mean, you can make things a lot easier for yourself by reducing your speed. But um, obviously, obviously, you get to the end of the convoy a lot, lot slower, and you'll you'll have run out of fuel by then. So, not much choice but to go full whack. And don't think you can drive in between these uh, um, mines on the, on the road. There, new no. collision detection is awful. Remember? We'll slow down there so we can take out one of those mines and pick up the kerosene cans and speed up. So yeah, you do have to slow down and speed up. And remember, you need to be going over 200 miles an hour before you can take off. So it was a really tricky manoeuvre there I pulled off by uh, slowing down to shoot the mines in the road, pick up the, ca pick up the uh, kerosene can, speed up again in time to take off before these mines started uh, appearing. And uh, I made notes on these stages of when uh, s certain waves appear, just to help me through this. So I made a note that um, there'll be those mines, pick up from the left hand side of other mines, then to speed up again and use the, use the kerosene on this level as much as possible. There's plenty of kerosene pickups here, so it takes the sky as much as you can and conserve your fuel. If I hadn't practiced the gnome that I made notes, I probably would have just gone through the level uh, just driving for the most part and uh, wouldn't have got anywhere because there's very, very little fuel pickups on this stage and it's really unforgiving. Now I'm not sure whether that makes things more interesting or less fun. Um, if you didn't know that you would have lost the lost the game by now. It, it would have been better by the program it's just put like the just like the odd one can of fuel every now and again. A bit like on Road Blasters. Rather than having big uh, fuel pickups once every once in a while. Yeah, if you just have like one fuel camp here every now and again, like on a bend of the road, and you had to use your skills to pick it up, that would have made the game a lot more fun, a lot more interesting. It was such a drag practicing these levels and just constantly like running out of fuel and uh, being frustrated and having to retry it again. That's why I did these stages, uh, sta uh, this recording in stage by stage really. Yeah, lots of uh, kerosene pickups on this stage and missile pickups. So we're using missiles as much as, as much as possible. Darn, I thought I could shoot them out of the air then. Yeah, only 230 to uh, counting down there to visual contact. Yeah, so uh, yeah, very Chase HQ actually. Really, it's uh, it's actually quite a nice cross between Road Blasters and Chase HQ. Uh, but with a flying element. I suppose that's the twist on uh, those two games really, to make this stand apart. Right, we're low on fuel so we're keeping to the skies, using our rockets. And hopefully we'll get to the uh, end tanker before we run out of everything. Right, the leader's been spotted. Hopefully, he'll appear. Right, low on fuel. Oh, he fires missiles at us until we get really close to him. We've just about avoided them. Got a few of our own rockets left. Can we blow him up before fuel runs out? Yes. So that's stage four done, and uh, on to the uh, final stage. Be at the end of this stage, mate. Well, 
Well, as for, uh, I think I might start summing up a bit of a review here. Any of you that own a GX4000 console or thinking of and you're looking to buy games, this may be a worthy addition. Uh, you'll find this game very cheaply uh, on eBay. Usually, it's not worth much. Let's see, uh, you should be able to uh, pick this up for as cheap as maybe about a tenner. For a box version with uh, in, in the instruction manual, original car, I wouldn't be paying much more than £25 for it. But 25 quid is about the most I've seen it go for, really. It's cheap as 10 quid. It might be fun. It might be able to find the uh, cart loose on its own. Maybe for like a fiver or something like that. You wouldn't have done too badly then. Out of all the GS4000 games, this is not right as one of the best. But as a collector, you definitely need to own this one. This was probably one of the first part games released and reviewed at the time. It does um, use some um, of the extra uh, features of the uh, console and plus machines with the uh, skyline and uh, nice pictures with lots of extra colours. But actually, it doesn't use any of the features though for the gameplay, which is pretty common with most of the GX4000 releases. This game uh, plays quite happily on a, a normal Amstrad CPC. You're not really getting a huge value for money compared to buying this on tape disc. It just looks a bit nicer, really. I mean, you don't have any uh, loading between uh, levels. But yeah, I think um, review wise. Oh, we've got some helicopters appearing now. Um, review wise, I think I'll give this a score of. Well, Amsterdam Action gave it 94%, which is ridiculous, and then they re reviewed it and gave it 55%. I think on my gx4000.co.uk website, I gave this something like about 64% or something. But yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll concur with that. I'll, I'll still give it about 6.5 out of 10. So I did quite enjoy doing this long play. It is a very frustrating experience, very difficult, certainly for a game that's so simple. And I'll be honest with you, when I first picked up this game on cart, um, I didn't play it a huge amount. I think I got through, through, through the first stage and played it again, one more run after dying, and then I didn't bother again, and it took months before I could be... Uh, excited enough or interested to try it again and it just didn't really hold any long term appeal for me personally anyway it's a bit of a shame This would have been a cracking little game for like the mid 80s, uh, mid to late 80s, but you know, this was 1990 going on 1991. So, well, this was already looking quite old fashioned, but I suppose, given it's kind of a rip off of Road Blasters and Chase HQ, but given a bit of a novel twist with the uh, flying car, which can take off at will, it does uh, liven things up somewhat. And, uh, and it's competently programmed, I'll give it that. Uh, music's nice as well, it's jolly enough. It's always, um, Titus always had the same music programmer. Always, always had very, very similar music on uh, all their games. Whoever the music program was, um, you, can, you can tell it's the same guy. So he always used the same sort of uh, tone and instrument on all his music. Never really but, uh, varies the uh, instruments and tones used in his music. 
compared to say someone like David Whittaker, who's an excellent musician and had, came out with all sorts of cool and strange noises to go with his music, or like Tim Follin. It was rather jolly music for what apparently seems to be some kind of uh, dystopian future, Mad Max 2 style, although it's not, uh, although it's not the apocalypse, because obviously we've still got cities and uh, the driving to there. There is a little bit of an ending to watch, <coughs> and after the ending, I've uh, just got a little bit of bonus footage showing you the uh, game over sequence which is pretty cool which is a nuclear explosion going off in the uh, on the horizon then you can find that at the end of the video but we shouldn't be too far off the end here now not sure what other GX4000 games I'll do next I might look at Crazy Cars 2 or Mystical I've already done Long Place of Pang, Operation Thunderbolt, Robocop 2, uh, Batman, Barbarian 2, uh, Dick Tracy. Uh, there's a lot of, sort of there's some games that just can't really have a long play, like Clax, Plotting, Pro Tennis Tour, Tennis Game, but um, it takes forever that game. Uh, the long play will be like several hours long, I think. Well, I've done long plays for Wild Streets and World of Sports as well. World of Sports is quite a recent one, actually. Oh, yes, of course, the Batman the movie as well, if I didn't mention that. Um, so, yeah, uh, perhaps do a long play of Tintin on the Moon. A very, very easy game. Crazy Card 2 will probably come up soon as well. Might look at No Exit, the one on one beat em up release for the console, which unfortunately is pretty rubbish. But I'll be interested to see if I can progress further in that. I never completed it, well I never really bothered trying, it was rubbish. And remember, remember guys, there's only about sort of 25 GX4000 games, so uh... There you go. And also I've been uh, really, really busy recently guys, I'm sorry I haven't done uh, a lot more videos. And I haven't... Uh got around to really com uh, reply to comments and uh, emails and stuff like that. I'm ever so sorry. I will eventually get around to replying to everyone. Uh, I don't mean to be rude or ignoring anyone, but oh, guys, I've got so many different email accounts and you know uh, things are all over the place. I'm uh, always struggling to catch up on uh, replying to people. So apologies for that. Uh, my life's got a lot more busier recently. I still will continue to do long plays, they might not be as regular, but I'll try and make them count. Ooh. Just got the kerosene pickup in time. Because, uh, oh yeah, there's an extra life there, I just picked up that flying blue helmet. And uh, I think we should be very close to the final boss. Ah, he'll be peering after these creatures. They, these, these jumpy things uh, very rarely shoot back at you, but occasionally they do. Always seems to be the one on the far left that ends up shooting at you. Oh, just get rid of these douchebags really quickly with your missiles. They'll follow you across the road and continuously shoot at you, which makes targeting and shooting them really with your main gun a real pain in the arse. This guy, you can always just fly to the top of the screen and you will always hit him. Just the judge moving left and right very carefully. Yeah, I believe that was the leader spotted.
yeah, use your missiles on this, on these guys. And I believe he should be appearing about uh, now. And there he is. Now the trick to beating him is we've got the flying uh, sort of sky bike there. Just go, uh, go. Make sure you fly and go left and right in the uh, sort of the opposite direction as they're moving and using missiles like I'm doing. And he's a goner. And that's the uh, final stage completed. So. I'll leave it here guys, I'll leave you with the ending uh, uh, ending screen and music and remember some bonus footage at the end showing the game over sequence. But that's it from me, I'll give that 6.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you're all okay and I'll see you very soon on my next video. Cheers, goodbye.